Hi students, welcome to my continuing discussions on depreciation. Today we're going to look at a method that you probably have never seen before. It's a method that is devised to make it calculating depreciation easier for businesses that have a lot of pieces of equipment and maybe don't have an automated system for doing it. Even if they did, still a good shortcut. The method that we're going to look at is the group depreciation method. Your author has two shortcut methods, group depreciation and composite method. There's a pretty good chance you'll see these when you work in industry, so we're going to go ahead and give you an example of one. In our example, we have a company who has apartment buildings that are furnished with appliances, stoves, refrigerators, and dishwashers. Shows the cost of each of these categories. There's probably several stoves, several refrigerators, several dishwashers. Gives you their cost, their residual or salvage value, and their service life in years. If you add up the cost column, you'll notice that we have $141,000 of cost tied up in this appliances. Our residual value, if you add those up, 99 is 18, another thousand is 19,000. So these are some totals we're going to need moving forward. The first thing we'd want to do when calculating a group depreciation is to calculate what the depreciable basis is of everything in our group. And depreciable basis is just another way of saying cost minus residual or salvage value. For stoves, 51,000 minus 9,000 has a depreciable basis of 42,000. Refrigerators, 46 minus 1 is 45. And dishwashers, 44 minus 9, whoops, is also 35. Sorry about that. There you go. 42, 45, and 35 is our depreciable basis total is 122,000. We have one more thing we need to do before we're ready to launch. And that's to calculate what straight line depreciation would have been for just the first year. So you have to calculate it, but only once. 42,000 cost minus salvage divided by 6, as we're going to have straight line on that, would have been, if we did that method, 7,000 a year. 45,000 minus or divided by 5 would be 9,000 a year. And 35,000 a year divided by 4 is 8,750. If you add all of this up, depreciation for the year, first year would have been 24,750. I think we're ready to start now. He also gave us some information before we move on to problem 1. He told us we had three refrigerators purchased and we sold some. So we'll come back. But in problem one, they want you to calculate the group depreciation rate first, then the group life, and then finally depreciation for 2013. So let's start with the rate. The way you calculate the group depreciation rate is to take the current Year's depreciation had you used straight line, 24,750, and divide it by total cost, which is 141,000. And it will tell you that our composite depreciation rate is 17.6. And I'm rounding to 0 0.6 because the author asked that I do that. Let me drop down and give us a little more room to work. So our rate is 17.6. The next thing we're asked for is to calculate the group life. And the group life is calculated by taking the depreciable basis and dividing it by the current year's straight line rate, which would have been 24,750. If you divide that out, you'll see that the group life was 4.93 years. If you look at the array of data concerning years, that makes sense. Some was at 6, some at 5, and some at 4. So I'd like to stop and do a test of reason from time to time. That looks logical to me. Let's go ahead and calculate depreciation expense. Whoa! Sorry about that. I shifted. I got too close. I need to move it up a little to a 0.5. 
barred out her depreciation expense. That was pretty exciting, huh? For the year. It's going to be calculated by taking the cost of the equipment and timesing it by the composite rate. You're going to do better if you don't times it by the 17.6 because that will give you rounding errors, but rather times it by the whole fraction for this part of the entry and it will give you a cleaner answer and it will also give you what they're using on Connect, always a bonus. And you can tell by looking at it that it's going to come out to be 24750 so that will be our current year's depreciation expense. And in fact, we'll do that for 4.93 years, our service life. Let's see where that's going to take us and how we might calculate what that stub of a year is. So here's our accumulated depreciation for this. We did it four years, 24,750 times four, because our service life was 4.93 years. Then we have a stub of a year. How do you think we'll do that? Well, we'll take 93% of what we were taking, and we get that 93 right there. 93% of 24,750 is going to give you 23,118. Now, if you add all of the five years depreciation expense we take, you'll see it comes up to be $122,018. So really fast and pretty darn accurate way to estimate what depreciation expense will be. And remember, depreciation expense has always been and will always be an estimate. So if you're doing something that's systematic and rational, and this would be considered that, it's an acceptable method of depreciation. Let's move on to part two. We need to do a little scrolling here. In part two, it says repair the journal entries to record the purchase of the new refrigerators and the sale of the old. First of all, let me make mention that if you have a change in the group, you'd have to recalculate the group rate and the service life. So that would trigger this. We're not going to include that in our discussion, but it would happen now. We purchased three new refrigerators for 4500 and it, we also sold for $2,000, 5100 And I'm getting that information from right here, given in the problem. So we need to record a purchase of three new refrigerators and a sale for 2000 5100 Let's scroll down, but not too far. I can't be too close to the bottom or I'll do that shift thing. So if you purchase refrigerators for $4,500, you're just going to debit the appliance account, or maybe refrigerators, depending on how you're doing your accounting. I just picked appliances for $4,500 and credit it for cash for $4,500. And that records the purchase. And it also causes it to recalculate our composite rate and our service life. We also had a sell of equipment. If you recall, for, for $2,000 cash, we sold equipment, or actually refrigerators. I'm going to assume they're all in an appliance account. It could be that they're in refrigerators, but we're okay either way. It's just our example. Take out the whole 5100 since we haven't been keeping track of individual pieces of equipment or appliances, we can't calculate a gain or loss. So any difference is taken out of accumulated depreciation. So in our case, we'll take 3100 out, and that will record the sale of some equipment. Let's talk a little bit about the theory on what just happened in this account. Accumulated depreciation is where you take all the depreciation expense on equipment since you purchased it through the date. And if it's not exactly what you sold it for, one could say 
that if there was an error, it was in your past depreciation expenses, and that the gain or loss shouldn't be there, that it was depreciation that was wrong. We're just going to assume that everything was depreciated perfectly and take the whole amount out of accumulated depreciation. This is an acceptable method of recording this entry, and it recognizes that estimates are in place, but estimates have always been in place for calculating depreciation. This method is both systematic and rational, though you might question that second piece, rational, and so it's an acceptable method of calculating depreciation, and a lot faster and easier for companies that have a lot of equipment. So, an interesting look at group depreciation. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you soon.